Hey everyone, God bless you. Thanks a lot for tuning in. I have a reflection for you today that I've entitled, titled uh, Christian Interiority. Interiority. It's on the occasion of the Feast of Holy Pentecost, which is this Sunday. We are coming to the conclusion of this uh, sacred cycle. We've celebrated our Lord's triumph over death, his plundering of Hades, his glorious resurrection from the dead. We've benefited from his magnificent teaching on the kingdom of God prior to his ascension into heavens from the Mount of Olives, 40 days after his resurrection, taking the human race and planting us where he wants us, at the right hand of his Father with him, blazing the way for us to follow him. And then, having sat on the right hand of God, taken his throne as the King of living kings and the Lord of living lords, he sends forth this beautiful coronation gift on the day of Pentecost, his spirit that comes as a mighty wind, as a force, uh, upon the early church, the young church gathered there in the upper room. We learn, in fact, that the Christian faith, that way of life foreseen and prophesied by all of the sacred, righteous prophets of the Old Testament, affected by the saving work of Christ and coming to pass on the day of Pentecost, we, we discover that all of those prophecies about the interiority, the intimacy of union between God and his people, that he would actually send forth his spirit into our lives, write his law upon our hearts, and know us intimately so that all would know the Lord from the greatest to the least. We experience it as coming to pass. Pentecost applies the saving works of Christ to us and fashions us as uh, those who are literally permeated by God, indwelt by God. The Holy Spirit, who is the, the governor of all creation, who brings to pass uh, the creation of the world, together with the Father and the Son, we see that same hovering, that hovering that he did over the waters at the beginning of the world as described in the patriarchal histories in Genesis 1. We see the bringing forth of order and the magnificence of all the aspects of creation through the hovering of the Holy Spirit over the waters. That same language is used by Moses in the Pentateuch at the end of the Pentateuch in Deuteronomy. It's described of, of, uh, as the nature of the relationship between the patriarch Jacob and God. It says in Deuteronomy 32 that, that Jacob was the apple of God's eye and like an eagle hovering over its nest and fluttering its wings over uh, its young, so the Lord does to him. It's a magnificent uh, image of, of how God dwells and how he creates and fashions man. We see the hovering again when the Holy Spirit came, the power of the Most High upon the Most Blessed Virgin, Our Lady the Theotokos. And Christ was conceived in her womb and humanity had its new beginning. And the new Adam was uh, brought forth from the most holy virgin and the human race could breathe again being brought not just to health but to glorification and union with de with the divine and that hovering image we're all familiar with we who love christ and are servants of his in the church because that's the same language and the same vision for every baptism what is baptism but the first half of every baptism the priest is standing before the waters and what is he doing he's supplicating God to send his Holy Spirit upon these waters that they might become a labor of regeneration, that they might become a renewal for the forgiveness of sins, for the indwelling of the Holy Spirit and for victory over the evil one. And so those who go down into the waters actually become in union with God and become indwelt. The Holy Spirit shines forth upon them and takes up residence within him in the deep heart, into the interior throne in the heart of man. And from there, the Christian life is worked out. From there, the inspiration of prayer comes. This is how we learn. The Holy Spirit teaches us how to speak, and the most important speech of all, to speak to God as his children. He cries out, it's the scripture say, even within us, teaching us to say, Abba, Father. This is what the true Christian faith is, dear ones. This is why we are serving God, because we have been brought into union with him. As St. Paul says, if any man is in Christ, right, his, famous, his most favorite description of the Christian life, a, a description of union, en Christo, anyone is in Christ, new creation.
new creation. The Holy Spirit brings us into newness. And then he hovers over us in our lives, working with us and fashioning us just like he did at the beginning of the world in the physical creation. He does the same thing with our own interior universe. He teaches us how to love, to forgive, to be humble, to be gracious, to conform to the image of Christ himself. This is the Christian life. It's not a matter of the externals. St. Philaret has a beautiful word about uh, the danger of locating our Christianity in, in, in a shallow ideology or an externalism, which is uh, attractive to fallen man because it allows you to avoid the face-to-face -face confrontation of, of your true fallenness uh, and the vulnerability of that revelation. But of course, that extern externality also prohibits true interior renovation and rejuvenation, renewal. Listen to the words of St. Philibert. I want to read you this, uh, this warning. It's so beautiful. He says, To be no enemy to faith, to do no crying injustice, to make an occasional display of charity, to avoid pernicious excesses, in short, to fulfill merely the most indispensable and outward duties of a man and of a member of society, is but to whiten one's sepulcher. <laughs> what he's saying? He's saying those aren't impressive things. Just because, because you're not axe murderer doesn't mean that you're a Christian. He says, this is but to whiten one's sepulcher, which nevertheless remains within full of dead men's bones. It is to pluck the leaves of the tree of life given for the healing of the nations, but not to eat its fruit. Ooh, what an image. Which should feed the Christian. It is to have the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, which does not lead into the kingdom of God, but to penetrate into the recesses of one's own heart, from which proceed evil thoughts, and there to establish purity and holiness, to keep the whole law, not to offend in one point, in order not to be guilty of all. Who is the man that left to his own understanding and powers will boast of being able to do this? Christianity is impossible without the interiority of the Holy Spirit. It is God alone who creates in man a clean heart and renews a right spirit within him. We must be born again in order to see the kingdom of God. As long, Christians, as God preserves our existence and the welfare of his church, so long need we not doubt that the spirit of God abideth in it. Even as at the time of the creation of the world, the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, so is it moving even now during the continued restoration of man. What a way to describe your own life and the age of grace and what the work is the, the work of the church is to accomplish the continued restoration of man your life in christ is the path of restoring your own humanity upon the deep of our disordered being and by its quickening power ensures his regeneration by grace let us yield ourselves to his almighty will let us turn our thoughts and desires from the flesh and the world unto him let us out of the depths of our fallen nature cry to the Holy One that he should come to us, O heavenly King, Comforter, the Spirit of Truth, who are in all places and fill all things, treasure of good things, giver of life. Come and abide in us. I won't complete the prayer because you're going to say it for the first time since Pascha on Sunday of Holy Pentecost. Dear ones, when you kneel down for the kneeling prayers on Sunday, those magnificent three Pentecost kneeling prayers, the first time that we have put our knees for prayer onto the ground since we celebrated Holy Pascha, <coughs> yield yourself. Yield yourself. I ask God to help you to do that. Embrace the presence of the Holy Spirit in the interior of your life. Let Him rule. Let Him inspire. Let Him bring forth and restore you. And I ask your prayers also for me and my unworthiness. I wish you a glorious Pentecost. Patristic Nectar Publications is pleased to present a six-part lecture series by Father Josiah Trenum entitled, Family Life, Following Jesus Christ in Your Home. In these lectures, Father Josiah expounds upon the many ways in which the sacred presence of Jesus Christ at the heart of the family is able to infuse the daily routines of family life with a scent of heaven and turn the family home into a domestic church. In these eminently practical lectures, Father draws from his and Presbytera Catherine's more than 30 years of family struggle, the many ways that the love of God can be intertwined with nourishing marriage, raising children, 
governing a kitchen, bridal chamber, and household, and contributing positively to a neighborhood and local community. For these and other available titles, please visit our website at patristicnectar.org.